Hi, so uh, the next thing we're going to talk about with our GCSE water project is um, how to do some artist research. So as part of my project, I'm looking at David Hockney. And you can see this is the page that I have created on um, the artist and specifically looking at his swimming pools. Now, one of the first things we need to make sure of when we're doing artist research is that we are using um, a credible source. So on this occasion, when Googling David Hockney swimming pools, um, straight away comes up the Tate Gallery, which actually has a whole huge amount of information on this particular area of the artist's work. We know it's credible, so what we can do is read through that and choose the bits that we think are important for our research. The other alternative to um, reading on internet sites, if you're not a fan of trawling through information like that, is to um, go on YouTube and have a look at some of the videos there, listen to what people are saying and write up your notes that way. Um, it's a far more interesting way if you're, if you're not a keen reader. So with this page, let's have a look at how I've laid this out. You can see actually there's very little writing on it um, and that's because you just don't need loads. People think that to get a high grade in GCSE, you have to write essays on your artist. That's actually not the case. You need to be concise and you need to pick out the information that's relevant to what you're looking for. So in this case... I've got information about um, his uh, interest in water, what he was fascinated by. So here I've put about appearance and movement, how he painted. So I've got here about um, blocks of colour media he used. So um, here I've got about the acrylic paint and also how it's influenced you as an artist. So on this page, I've done three studies and I've clearly said what I've been looking at. So here I've put, I used pencil colour to explore the shades of the water. So it's really clear there that I'm looking at the shades that David Hockney might have used. Here I've put about blocks of colour and I've used paint. And here down the bottom, I've just done a really small study of um, this section here. And it's really important that you pay attention. These are quite deliberate marks. They're not random. So it's really important that you um, copy it correctly. And I've talked about exploring solid shapes with pen. Once you've got all that down and ordered your pictures, then obviously it's important to have a name and where he was from and um, the date he was born. We don't need to know anything about um, how many brothers and sisters he had, where he went to school, unless it's particularly relevant. Uh, you could add in that he went to America, which obviously is really important for these, these paintings are all done in America, inspired by his new lifestyle. That's how I would lay out the information. Now, following on from the artist's information, it's then important to show how that's inspired your work. What, what's the point of looking at an artist if you're not then going to carry it forward? So here I've got a page on exploring water. You might recognise these from the other video where I was um, playing about with making shapes in water. And very important, I put up here, inspired by David Hockney, I filmed myself moving water in a tray um, to create ripples and drips. And then I've used the patterns from here to create my own image and explore how light and shadows work in different media and I've done this in um, nine different ways to really try and explore you'll notice these patterns that appear in David Hockney's work it's made a nice link through um, giving me a good opportunity to explore good opportunity to include my own photographs um, and just show that I'm thinking all the time about how I'm using the sources I'm looking at Okay, so now you've had a look at mine, should make it a bit easier to make your own.